Is it in focus? It, hard to hard to say. Who can know? Hard to say. Hey guys, it's Sarah, and today I'm in a car with. Hi, I'm Christiana. We uncharacteristically went to see three movies this weekend, so we thought it would be fun to do the movie review. <laughs> We're just gonna discuss the three movies that we saw and their nuances and what makes them good, and it probably won't be that intellectual material. We're professionals. We are professionals. Okay, movie number one. The Martian. The Martian. Uh, Matt Damon. Matt Damon. He looked good at the beginning of the movie. He looked right. Real good. By the end. The CGI. We're not gonna give it away. <laughs> now, I heard this movie described as Apollo 13 on Mars. I'm gonna disagree with that because Apollo 13 has like seven people and The Martian just has one person. That's true. Also, I feel like they were just like, let's name a really famous space movie and just say on Mars. It's like Avatar on Mars. On Mars. But this movie really makes you believe that like we've been on Mars. I was like, the sand is red. This is going to blow. Oh, I believe that's Mars. I think they may have filmed it on Mars. I don't think they're disclosing that, but I think NASA may have had a hand in the filming of this movie. I'm in a different camp because I also think that landing on the moon was a conspiracy. Oh, true. I forgot that we think that. Can we also talk about how it was probably one of the most stressful movies I've ever seen? It was very stressful. There was a lot of stuff blowing up. Not great. A lot of life-threatening situations. Matt Damon's by himself, so keep in mind whenever something goes wrong. This isn't a spoiler. I'm not going to say why. No help is coming. But he had a wound at one point. Oh yeah, this happens in the first five minutes. So, so if you think that's a spoiler, then get over yourself. But he had get to out. sew it up himself, and I can barely watch an episode of House without feeling squeamish. So I was like, Ugh. Which also, this was like a good movie because it led to you deciding that you wanted to take self-defense classes where you learned to sew your own wounds. But I then you realize that you couldn't even watch that scene in The Martian and realize that that was actually impractical. <laughs> I think the self-defense lesson and learning to sew myself up was two separate things. Oh, you want to take two classes. Because I don't think self-defense classes teach you how to sew up your own I clothes. knew that. I didn't know if you knew that. Oh, Kristen Wiig. So good at this movie. Oh, right. She wears a white turtleneck for a long time. Which she I does. didn't love. But, yeah. Her she hair looked fire, though. She did tell some jokes. Chewedle. Chewedle. Our favorite. The Childish scientist. Gambino. Childish Gambino. Oh, he was like one of the smartest people in the movie. Yeah, that was surprising. Also, who was the NASA head guy? He was famous. Oh, Jeff Daniels. Jeff Daniels. What's he from? The Newsroom. Also known as The Wire. <laughs> yes. So Sarah thought The Newsroom and The Wire were the same show. I think just because they both start with the. Also, um, the guy from Lord of the Rings was in it. Oh, Ned from uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah. Oh, what's it? It's Sean Bean. Sean Bean. He did not die in this, which is surprising. Cause he doesn't usually die in everything. I think they're did. saving that for the sequel. Okay, yeah. For him to die. But he was like barely in it. Yeah, we read that the sequel is called Jupiter. Jupiter. <laughs> Although Jupiter's made of no, gas. The, Ju <laughs> the Jupiterian. You actually can't live on Jupiter because no. it's gaseous. I did a project on it in third grade. I read the book yeah. by Andy Weir. Um, I think it's a great book. I think there are some science parts that I skimmed <laughs> on some level um, where he gets like really into the chemistry. I just, you know. You're like, I can. But the book I thought was really good. I loved it. I've recommended it to a lot of people and that's why I was excited to see the movie and I thought the movie stayed very true to the book except for um, one very important plot point in the book that they didn't include which is that at the beginning of the movie and at the beginning of the book they think Mark Watney's dead so they put him on a stamp and then they find out that he's not dead and so they try to recall all the stamps because no living person can be on a U.S. postage stamp, and people won't give them back. When I was watching it, I was like, this is missing like one thing. One one really critical thing, and it was the stamp storyline. It was. And, um, you know, that was pretty important, but they chose to leave that out. That ended up on the cutting room floor. But I'm hoping special effects. I mean, um, special features on the DVD. Special effects. Special effects that they'll include. 3D stamp. 3D stamp. I'm hoping for a 3D the hologram stamp. What's the second movie? Whoa. Oh, spec. Spectre, James Bond, Bond, the new, James Bond, the new Bond, James Bond. It was entertaining, but if you saw the last one, Skyfall, you pretty much saw this one. Oh, that's in my true. opinion. It is almost exactly the it's same. It's really as hard to keep track of all the white bad guys. It's so real though. Everybody was like some like Scandinavian like bad guy. Yeah. Like I could not tell the difference. Even in the last movie, when the guy was from Spain, he was still super white. Javier Bardem. Yeah. This was similar to Skyfall in in many ways. I'm gonna keep 
that's kind of the formula of a Bond movie, which is what I tell people, is that like they all have like very similar plot lines. And I think that that's kind of what people like about Bond is like that they know exactly what to expect from it. That like Bond never dies. Like, and he always saves the day and he always gets the girl. And there were he two Bond happens. girls in this one. One of them only got screen time for like five minutes. She was only on for five minutes. And I think we have to call her a Bond woman. She was. She was over the age of 15. She was. Let's rate the other Bond girl one to ten. What do we think? Okay, well, first of all, she had a gap in her front teeth. So Which I. Feel good about. I have a gap in my front teeth, so I was loving her from minute one. We liked her, but we were confused by her. I think they introduced her as someone we should have, like, like, immediately we were supposed to, like, understand everything about who she was. Oh, sorry, there were three Bond girls, because <laughs> in the beginning intro sequence, he, like, is with this girl, and then we find out that he was just using her to get into her room in a hotel. Yeah. Which, like, he's Bond. He can obviously get into a like, crappy he, he, hotel. He needed to go like on her rooftop. He was like BRB. And then he never went back. No, he never went back. Let's rewind and talk rewind. about the intro scene. You know at the beginning when they play like they, they play like the theme song. So Sam Smith did it this time and last time it was Which, Adele. it sounded oh, great. Oh, Sam Smith, fire. I feel like I like Skyfall by Adele more as a standalone song, but I also haven't listened to Sam Smith's song outside of watching. That's true. They chose to do this weird opening with all these tentacles. There's a lot of almost nudity. But the tentacles are Beware. strategically placed. Yeah, if you've seen Skyfall, you've basically seen this, except imagine instead of like the underwater like Skyfall theme, it's just like tentacles, tentacles everywhere. The it, like zoomed into his eyes and there was, uh, uh, there was like, you should insert a screenshot from this. Oh, so like the lines and the colored part of his eye were all tentacles, like moving. I have a fear of clusters. If you don't know what that is, I forget yeah. how to pronounce I it. I also have a fear. It's like tryptophobia or something. Yeah, yeah we definitely both have and Daniel Craig is like nude as well. And there was like a three-way with the octopus. Like, you know, it was, it was the octopus, <laughs> the woman, and Daniel Craig. <laughs> it was too much. Which was too much. But I think we were overall entertained, and it didn't really feel like a two and a half hour movie. The Martian really had did feel like a two and a half hour movie. Bond didn't. Bond was pretty entertained. The Martian, we were like too long. We were like, please. The third movie we saw was Secret in Their Eyes. I always want to say secrets in their eyes. Or was it the secret in their eyes? No, I think it's just secret in their secret eyes. Secret in their eyes. But let's be real. Which? Would you not have more than one secret in your eye? Because I think I have multiple secrets. Probably. I might just have one. Scott Tweedle. Tweedle, Julia Roberts, Nicole Kidman. Hank from Breaking Bad. Yeah, Hank from Breaking Bad. And bring. then, um, what's the guy's, um, the guy, the jerk guy? He's from something. He's from House of Cards. Yeah, so the trailer sets it up as, like, Julia Roberts' daughter is murdered. Yeah, like, basically. The, the tra if you've seen the trailer, you know this already. Yeah. And the beginning of the movie... So if you're uncomfortable with any sort of like violence on on screen, no, don't do that. yeah, because the beginning sequence is like her being murdered. That's basically the plot, and they're trying to like catch the guy, and so they're it trying keeps, to figure out who did it, and it keeps flashing forward like 13 years because they still haven't caught the guy, so they're like whatever. Yeah, so it is one of those movies. I did find it a little hard, so they don't do any sort of subtitle telling you when it is. You have to go by does Chewbacca have gray in his beard or not. I think the makeup artist should win an Oscar because if anyone can make Julia Roberts look that bad. She looked terrible. She had crusty lips. She like, looked real like, bad. Julia Roberts is a beautiful woman. She's stunning. And she, she looked, looked hideous. The person who was choosing Nicole Kidman's wigs should not win an Oscar because her wigs were terrible in this film. To be fair, she had three wigs. All terrible. All terrible. And if any of those are her real hair, then she has bigger hair. But yeah, I liked it. I thought it was really good. Yeah. So basically, I like all like, kinds of true crime. So I describe this as all of the like true crime TV shows that I watch as a movie. It's like a long episode of Bond Order. It's like a really <laughs> good long episode of Bond Order. Actually, a mix of Criminal Minds. Also, Chuito is such a good actor. Oh, uh, we saw him twice this weekend and he's so good. We want more. We want more Chuito. Our favorite line from the movie is when Julia Roberts says, what do you think? And then he goes, I think you look a million years old. Which like, oh, Chuito! We don't think that was written into the so, script. We think Chuito just said that and they like, loved it. Julia, you look at rough. No, so it was really good. I, I thought all the acting was good. Obviously, Nicole Kidman. Um, you know, she's a person. She's yeah. Movies. She had one really good scene. Okay, yeah. I, to be fair, I like Nicole Kidman in movies, and in some movies, for the most part, she was very like not really acting in this movie. And then she had one scene where she tore it up. She killed it. Like I literally turned to Sarah and was like, "She's amazing." Hundred percent. Yeah. We stopped noticing her wig. Like, it was. We good. forgot she was wearing a wig. That was also her best wig. It was ponytail. Her best. It was her best wig. Yeah. Although she needs to wear stronger shirts. 
Oh, if you see the movie, you'll know what we're saying. Stronger shirts. We're starting a petition for stronger shirts. Do you have anything? I don't know. The movie was just good. So if you were gonna, let's let's do this. If you if someone's gonna see one of those three, which one should they see? Okay, but here's what I think. Here's my opinion. I really thought, having read The Martian, and because it's a space movie, I really thought, okay, I need to see this in theaters. Like it's not gonna be something worth seeing. Oh in yeah. I now don't think that's true. I don't think the space was like as incredible as I thought it was. If you've seen movies like Gravity, those are movies that it's like I probably Interstellar, which I haven't seen, but people say is the same way. Like the space is what makes the movie so amazing. So there are movies that you probably won't watch on TV or they won't be as good on TV. Whereas The Martian, most of it takes place like in a habitat environment with just that TV. Also, funny story. So we went to an AMC theater. Oh. And right. <laughs> she so I guess AMC's doing this thing now where you assigned get a, seats. assigned seats. And so Christiana picked her seats. It was great. Yep. We showed up to the theater. And someone was sitting in our seats. And she went up to them and she was like, excuse me, I think you're sitting in our seats. But then the woman was like, here are the receipts. Like, these are my seats. These are my seats. And then and so I was like, oh, my bad. So then I'm like, oh crap, they like double booked us in seats. Like, how did this happen? Technology! You know, like I was freaking out. And then I went and I looked at our tickets and I, and this was on Friday, Black Friday. And I went and looked at our tickets and I had bought them for Saturday. <laughs> and the same showing on Saturday. But they had let us in, so we're like, we're gonna see it. Yeah, they tore our tickets and didn't even look at them. They didn't even help me out and say these are tickets for the wrong day. So we went to the back and we're like, all right, we'll send these. Because the, honestly, the movie was like starting. So we're like, there's no way there's anyone else coming in this theater. And then a couple came in and they were like, hey, and the same thing happened. Like, hey, you're sitting in our seats. And we were like, and we weren't oh. gonna like lie. We were like, you're right. <laughs> so then we had to sit on like opposite ends. Like, so it, maybe that's part of why we didn't enjoy it. But then, follow up, when we went to see Spectre, we showed up and there were kids in our seats and I was like, I did it again. There were these two like teenagers in our seats and I was like, oh my gosh, I bought the ticket. But I checked the tickets, they were for the right day. So I went up to them we, and I said, hi, these are our seats. And they got mad at me and they were like, ugh. <laughs> but we saw through the secret in their eyes. We were like, we made this mistake yesterday, but we didn't mean it. You guys meant it. Yeah, they got really annoyed because they had tried to sit in our seats and they knew they weren't theirs. And so then we made the move and then they went and sat in the front row. I don't think they had tickets to that movie. We think that they had tickets to The Good Dinosaur. They were too young for Bond, for sure. They were too young for the tentacles. The whole scene I was watching, I like commented to Sarah, I was like, those boys shouldn't be in here. Yeah, so I, okay, so I have to say, I would say The Martian, if you're gonna see one of the three, you were saying you don't have to see The Martian. Yeah, like I'm gonna say, you don't see The Martian in theaters. I also think Secret in Their Eyes would be just as good on DVD, so I'm gonna have Red to say Box. Spectre. I'm gonna have to say that Spectre is the one that's, cause there's a lot of like, it's Bond. There's a lot of stuff blowing up. Yeah. There's a lot of like, uh, buildings collapsing and like back then oh and there's an entire scene at this like clinic in Austria where it's just like snow for days like yeah. that stuff was worth seeing in theater so I'm gonna have to even though Spectre wasn't my favorite of the three it's the one most worth yeah. seeing in theater also it's Daniel Craig's last one so maybe you want to see it although if you want to do a three-part feature go see all three in one weekend like us that's real but that's pretty much it that's all our thoughts on these three movies so I hope you enjoyed this I hope you sat through it all and thanks for watching thanks guys nice to meet you all you're all beautiful so beautiful have a nice day do you want to take a hand off the wheel and help me out <laughs> she's dating her mom it's I'm not like <laughs> not, not dating. I'm not. Not. <laughs> but like one spoiler for the first five minutes is that um, the guy that looks like Bond wearing a sugar skull mask is Bond. Yeah. <laughs> if, if it looks like Daniel Craig wearing a sugar skull mask, it's him.